Today, New Hampshire stubbed its toe against Maine, and that gave Tim Bevow's club yesterday off, and now leaves no margin for error in this double elimination tournament. Vermont, meanwhile, has split its two games, first beating Rhode Island and then losing to Connecticut Monday afternoon. Here is manager Corey Pike's lineup for tonight. And it'll be led off by the catcher, Jacob LaRoche. He'll be followed by Kean Eckloff batting second in left field. Bryce Barber batting third. Austin Ravlin, the cleanup hitter. Michael McDougal is batting fifth, followed by Levi Bent, Luke Tomilowicz, Maxwell Smith, and Grayson Pike. And New Hampshire has on the mound for this ball game Mason DeVal. And as you see, he pitched two-thirds of an inning, 20 pitches in the opening round game, and so that has no bearing on his ability to go potentially the entire game tonight. With the pitch limits that are in place, there are three players ineligible to pitch for this game, including Tristan Lucier, who is the starting shortstop tonight for New Hampshire. He went beyond the pitch limit where he could come back in two days. And on the flip side for Vermont, Bryce Barber and Michael McDougal also are unavailable to pitch in this ball game. Well, so far, so good. The weather has been just really conducive to playing Little League Baseball this week. Right now, 77 degrees, overcast skies, a chance of rain later tonight. But that shouldn't come until after midnight. And since there's a midnight curfew for this Little League Baseball event, we should be good. And we are underway, Vermont against New Hampshire. The loser is eliminated, the winner advances to a four o'clock game tomorrow against Maine in an another elimination game. LaRoche, Eckloff, and Barber here on the top of the first inning facing Mason DeVal. Get a good look at Tyler Chevet, the catcher, uh, catcher, the battery mate of Mason DeVal. Strike three swinging. LaRoche is the first out of the ball game. Defensively behind DeVal at third base, Braden Connolly. Tristan Lucier at short. Keith Townsend at second. Cal Lucier at first, the twin brother of the shortstop. And then in the outfield, Ryzen Michaud in right, Jacoby Acevedo in center, Dom LaBranch out in left. And the count goes even one and one to Kean Eckloff, starting left fielder tonight for Vermont. One ball, two strikes. Kean is the son of Irma and Sven. Sven is one of the coaches on this Vermont staff. The manager is Corey Pike. Sven Ekloff and Jason LaRoche are the two coaches. And the younger Ekloff is the second strikeout victim of the inning. And that'll bring up Bryce Barber. So far through two games, he's been the biggest hitting star for Vermont in Bristol, Connecticut. Two for five. He was intentionally walked and has scored a run. And he was a big part of the win, one nothing on Sunday over Rhode Island, where Mike Ryan pitched well also. But then in their game yesterday, the loss to Connecticut, it was 3-1 a final score. They only managed one hit. Jacob LaRoche had the only hit, so Vermont's going to have to generate some offense here tonight against Mason DeVal. His 1-2 pitch. Strike three. Three up, three down. Three Ks in the book for Mason DeVal. LaRoche, Eckloff, and Barber Scoreless as we head to the bottom of the first. Also, with 
Something international strongly encourages all unvaccinated spectators to wear masks while on our complex. Vaccinated individuals may wear masks at their comfort. That's fifth, followed by Acevedo, Chauvet, Connolly, and Michaud. And they're going to have to deal with Austin Ravelin. Austin is one of the very good pitchers for this Essex Town Little League program. And baseball is just one of his passions. He loves the outdoors, loves to hunt and fish. He apparently fillets a perch to restaurant quality. His first pitch bunted foul by Dom LeBrant. I'm not so sure he's able to show off those skills to his teammates in Bristol, Connecticut. They've got the dormitories and they've got the cafeteria, food provided for them. But apparently back up home in Vermont, Austin Ravelin can go catch you some fish and cook you up some fish. Swing and a miss at a pitch up and out of the zone. LaBranch knew it, kicked a little bit of dirt, now gets back into the batter's box facing an 0-2 hole. Popped up. Coming in the left fielder to put it away. Kian Ekloff, one away in the bottom of the first. Number 27, Mason DeVal. Now Mason DeVal. As I mentioned, this is the second of our two games today, there's a line shot, base hit to left. Ekloff has to play it on the bounce. A one-out single in the bottom of the first for Deval. The New Hampshire dugout is pumped to begin this ball game. And now Tristan Lucier stands in. Fouls the first pitch away. This is the second of our two games today. We had an elimination game this afternoon where Maine ousted Rhode Island 21 to three. And so Maine awaits the winner of this one in another elimination game at four o'clock tomorrow that you can also see here on ESPN Plus. Lucia rips it right side, gloved by the first baseman Grayson Pike. Now the ball is just trickling out towards, there we go, someone's out there to pick it up. No harm done as the runner advances. Deval stands at second, advancing on the ground out. And with one Lucier twin out, here comes the other, Cal Lucier, the cleanup hitter. And if you hadn't noticed it already, I gotta point it out, it's so unusual to see a left-handed catcher, Jacob LaRoche. Saw him frame that pitch to make sure Austin Ravelin got the call in the outside corner. No balls and a strike. To the New Hampshire first baseman. He does pretty much what his brother just did. Ground ball right side, but he's going to reach. Over to third goes Mason Deval, and with two outs, New Hampshire is set up. Michael McDougal is the second baseman who got a glove on it. Just couldn't come up with it, and by the time he recovered, he smartly just held on to the baseball. Didn't worry about trying to get the out at first. Just make sure that runner stays at third, and now that runner's gonna have a chance to score. On the pitch in the dirt, Deval slides in safely, and around to third, great hustle by Cal Lucier. So a base hit by Deval and a base hit by Cal Lucier. And a wild pitch. That pitch catches a piece of the home plate umpire, Thomas DeMuro, and therefore stays at home plate and does not allow the runner to try and score from third.
Ravelin's 2-0 pitch. Called strike. Keith Townsend was backing out of the way of it and thought it was high. But he's got himself a 2-1 count. You see, he likes so many of these kids in the New England region. Hockey fan. Washington Capitals are his favorite team. Swing and a miss. Ravlin took something off. Now he's got himself a full count. Again, Townsend ducked out of the way of a pitch. This time got the call. It's ball four. And runners on the corners again for New Hampshire. One, Jacoby Acevedo. Jacoby Acevedo stands in. Right. Even though we did not have a regional round in Bristol last year due to the pandemic, a number of the little leagues on a local and regional level within the state held Little League and held tournaments. And the core of this New Hampshire team a year ago played and played very well, setting themselves up for success this year. Count goes to one and two. And Jacoby is one of four holdovers from the 2020 New Hampshire State Champs. Mason Deval and then the Lucier Twins, the other three who were the returning core of this one that is still one of five teams left in this New England region with a chance to go to Williamsport. We're just nine days away from the start of the Little League World Series. Three balls, two strikes. Chopped over the mound. McDougal's got it, touches the bag, and very nicely records the third out of the inning. A run on two hits, a couple of runners left on base. This is how our first run of the night scored. Great hustle to get to home plate. one nothing New Hampshire. the A. Bartlett Giamatti Little League Leadership Training Center in Bristol, Connecticut, Breenfield. Our final game of the day. And we begin the top of the second inning with Vermont trailing 1-0 to New Hampshire. This is Tyler Chevette, the catcher and number seven hitter leading off. And we have the official scoring from that last half inning. The run scored on a wild pitch and then an error on the catcher allowed the runner to take third. That wound up not costing the team at all. So they got a run on a couple of hits. There was an error in the inning. And New Hampshire's playing from out in front. We've got a strike out of Ravelin. Fourth consecutive strikeout to begin the game for Deval. And here's Michael McDougal. McDougal has had a really good all-around tournament so far, playing second, pitching at the plate. Come on, Michael. He's ahead in the count now, two balls, no Come strikes. On, good job, Michael. McDougal just turned 12 years old. He's gonna be a seventh grader soon at Essex Middle School. He thought that was ball four. The call came a little bit late. I don't think he was trying to show up the umpire at all. 
And so now he's back in with a 3-1 count. Strike two. And by the way, a great shout out to all of our volunteer umpires. Thomas DeMuro calling balls and strikes. Julius Trimbach at first. Michael Connolly at second. Darren Lambert at third. And that is three straight strikes thrown after falling behind 3-0. Mason Deval has struck out all five batters he's faced so far. Now Levi Bent tries to change that trend for Vermont. Now Levi walloped the biggest home run of the summer so far for this team, a two-run shot to rally past Georgia Vermont Little League in the district tournament. And again, these teams have gone through the gauntlet to get to this point in regional play. One ball, two strikes. You gotta win your district, you gotta win your section, then you gotta win your state just to get to the regionals to then have the opportunity to make it to the Little League World Series. Six up, six down, all by strikeout. Vermont, Tyler Chevette, Leads off the bottom of the second for New Hampshire facing Austin Ravlin. And Tyler has a perspective I have heard from other folks over the years about why they like playing Little League. He's behind nothing in two. Tyler says, quote, I play Little League because it's a more relaxed version of the AAU ball that I play as well. So you've got travel ball and you've got Little League baseball. And the sense that I get, at least when they are in Bristol and at the regional as Ravelin strikes out Chevet, is that this is just more fun. Yes, it's more relaxed, but it's still very competitive. And, and you're out there obviously trying to win every single ball game, get a home run every time and strike out every batter. But there seems to be a different feel. And you're playing with your, your buddies so many times. You're playing with your classmates and kids you've grown up with. And then to have the opportunity not to just play a tournament here and a tournament there. And you get a chance to come and have potentially a full week with your best friends in a dormitory playing a baseball game every day. And it's just an experience that is second to none. The batter now, Braden Connolly, the third baseman for New Hampshire. Braden's a 12 year old. He rips that through the hole in the left field for a one out base hit. Braden says if you are going to put him in a car or on a plane to go anywhere, he'd want to go to Cooperstown, New York. He's not necessarily saying he wants to be a baseball Hall of Famer, but he would love to go tour the hall. I would highly recommend it. Cooperstown is a great place to go if you're a baseball fan. Ryzen Michaud grounds into the force out. Connolly retired 5-4, and there are two away. And even though Cooperstown is a tiny little village in upstate New York, it's not just about the Hall of Fame. The entire town is baseball themed. Almost every store and restaurant you go into is all about baseball. It is an immersive experience if you can get yourself to Cooperstown. Cal Murphy is the pinch hitter for Dom LeBranch with two outs in the second. And he misses on the bunt attempt. Cal is the oldest of Kathleen and Matthew's three kids. He's got uh, a younger brother, Nolan, who's 10, a younger sister, Annie, who is five. And Cal is uh, 4'11", 200. Well, that can't be right. I've got him 200 pounds. Can't be 200, maybe 100. Says he wants to play in the NFL. Slow roller. Tough chance for Tamilowitz. Can't make the play. And runners are on the corners. Michaud at third. Murphy is aboard at first. Number 27, Mason DeVal. Now Mason DeVal, who singled and scored the game's only run, stands in. Swing and a miss, ball bounces away, runner from third coming in, sliding safe.
A very similar script to last inning. On a wild pitch, this time it's Ryzen showed with a good slide to avoid that tag. Got the left hand in on the plate to make it 2 nothing, New Hampshire. And on that wild pitch, Cal Murphy moved into scoring position. Hit in the air, back of first base, tough play. And it's made by Grayson Pike over the shoulder. But New Hampshire be both of them because this is an elimination game. And New Hampshire has the early lead behind the brilliant pitching of right-hander Mason DeVal. He has struck out all six batters to begin the ball game. And he gets a swinging strike on Luke Tomilowitz. Bottom third of the order here for Vermont. Tomilowitz, Smith, and Pike. Nice job to lay off the high fastball when the count goes full, three and two. Swing and a miss. Seven Ks in a row. This fastball's got a little giddy up on it. Kind of short arms it, and I think that makes it appear even faster. It gets on the batter a little quicker. And he gets ahead in the count to Maxwell Smith. And quickly behind the count, 0-2. And there you go, strikeout number eight. Number 20, Grayson Mason Deval facing Grayson Pike. up there hacking his great uncle Lenny Whitehouse on his mom's side was a left-handed reliever who pitched in the big leagues for the Texas Rangers and the Minnesota Twins back in the early and mid 80s his great nephew Grayson jumps out of the way of the pitch and uh, uncle Lenny was at the state championship he's been a huge little league supporter and fundraiser in and around Burlington Vermont but his great nephew is now the ninth straight strikeout victim of Mason DeCal, the three and four hitters. One ball, one strike from Austin Ravelin. Well, North Manchester hooks at Little League, won the New Hampshire State Championship last week. He got to an 11 game district gauntlet, and this young man led the way. A drive deep to right, and it is long gone. Touch them all, Tristan Lucier. Three, nothing, New Hampshire. There was no doubt about that one. Turned on it and drove it well beyond the fence here at Greenfield. Number six, Cal Lucier. Almost could call that light tower power. My goodness. Well, coming to Bristol, Tristan had hit 10 home runs through 13 postseason games. So if I do my math quickly, that is 11 home runs in 15 games. In his last 15 games, he's gone deep 11 times. That is remarkable. And now his brother, who, by the way, when asked who his favorite athlete is, Cal says, Tristan's my favorite athlete. And I'm guessing at the moment that probably still holds true. Cal pretty dangerous at the plate himself. Grounder back to the mound. Ravlin gets the first out of the inning. Single run scored in each of the first three innings. 
and New Hampshire is in control at the moment, 3-0. Number three, Keith Townsend. Now Keith Townsend will stand in. And is usually the case when you get to the uh, regional round. You have put up some pretty gaudy numbers to win that state tournament wherever you came from. And throughout the entire 13-game run leading up to regionals, New Hampshire as a team batted over 400, and its pitching held opponents to only a 113 batting average. So if you do that, as a team you bat over 400, the opponent only hits a little over 100, you're going to win most every night. Three balls, no strikes to Keith Townsend. Four-pitch walk, and Townsend is aboard. Well, this New Hampshire team is so capably guided by Tim DeVal, the manager, David Townsend, Mike Lucier, the two coaches, as we've got a meeting on the mound. Got to keep it light out there. This is not the end of the world. And it looks like Ravelin is going to be replaced on the mound. And so Corey Pike, the manager, will put Grayson Pike, his son, onto the mound to try and keep it right where it is at three to nothing. We'll take a break while Grayson warms up. And let's show you one more time Tristan Lucier's Light Tower Power. Wow. Great uncle, Lenny Whitehouse, pitched in the major leagues. And among the uh, highlights of Lenny Whitehouse's career pitching back in the early 80s, he was on the mound to whiff Reggie Jackson for Reggie's 2000th career K. Townsend gets to second on the base hit by Jacoby Acevedo. Bunt laid down, played a third, ball is dropped, and everybody's safe. Ryan Gaspi's bunt was fielded by Jacob LaRoche. He tried to get the lead runner, and it didn't work out. So he reaches on the sacrifice bunt and fielder's choice. And the right decision was made. It just looked like that ball handcuffed the third baseman. So Townsend's at third, Ace Avito's at second. And just making sure that Luke Tomilowitz's leg is okay because it looked like he took a direct shot on that peg from Jacob LaRoche. That has been charged an error on the third baseman because the throw certainly looked like it was right on target. And like I said, it just looked to, to handcuff him. And so he's going to tough it out. And with the bases loaded and one out, Braden Connolly at the plate. One ball, one strike. Bounces off the chest protection of the catcher. And there's another run on the wild pitch to make it 4-0 New Hampshire. Now 
Maui. Savito's the runner at third. Gaspi's out at second. And the 2-1 pitch. Good eye by Connolly. And as you saw there for a moment, the infield remains in with only one out and no force, trying to make sure they don't allow another run to score. And with the way, Mason DeVal's been pitching on the other side. They can't afford to allow New Hampshire to get any further ahead. The payoff pitch. And there is out number two. First punch out of the night for Grayson Pike. And he gets ahead in the count to Ryzen Michaud. Two balls and a strike to Michaud. Ryzen belted a two-run homer last Sunday, a week and a half ago in the New Hampshire State Final. To help get that big win over Bedford. He chases that pitch and now is facing a 2-2 count. Swing and a miss. Nice recovery by Grayson Pike to keep the score where it is. Four New Hampshire right-hander Mason DeVal has been lights out so far tonight. He has struck out the side in order in each of the first three innings. And so, yes, the soon-to-be 13-year-old seventh grader at Colley Middle School has nine punch-outs through the first nine innings, or three innings, rather, nine strikeouts in the first three innings. And he faces Jacob LaRoche for the second time. LaRoche, Eckloff, and Barber trying to get something going offensively against this tall right-hander who has just been spectacular. And also, if you're thinking about pitch count, again, the most you can throw in a game is 85, plus if you are at 85, you can finish the batter you're facing. He's now got 10 Ks in a row. He is on pace to at least be in the mix to be able to go the distance. Number 22, Keenan Eklund. Yeah, so the old, the, uh, the major league record to start a game was Pablo Lopez of the Marlins earlier this year. Nine consecutive Ks to begin a ball game. That is now 10 in a row. For Mason Deval. Uh, let's make it 11. We got to get a tote board going, a K corner going. Number 27, Bryce Barber. And at this point, now with Bryce Barber up, if you're Vermont, you just got to get a ball in play, make New Hampshire play some defense, create some offense and allow your teammates to say, this guy is not unhittable, we can get to this guy. But to this point, we have seen no evidence of that. Working quickly, and now ahead in the count to the dangerous Bryce Barber, one ball, two strikes. No flyouts, no ground outs, 11 strikeouts. Unbelievable. 12 up, 12 down, 12 strikeouts. Middle of the fourth, all New Hampshire. Somebody needs to call Sports Center. Pavilion restaurants for signature pizzas, sandwiches, wraps, fruit, and a wide variety of salads. The Pavilion Restaurant is a proud partner of the tournament as they Find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the official handles at Little League.
Follow the action and join the conversation with hashtag LLWS. A lot of fun being had at Greenfield in Bristol, Connecticut, especially for the folks from New Hampshire. Leading 4 nothing, but that's only part of the story. Through four innings of pitching, Mason Deval has not allowed anybody to reach base. He has struck out all 12 batters he has faced. Meanwhile, Grayson Pike trying to hold it right where it is. First relief pitcher into the game for Vermont. And the batter, Dom LeBranch, has himself a 2-0 count. LeBranch 0 for 1, flied out to begin the first inning. Puts it in the air again, and it falls in for a base hit. A leadoff single to left field for LeBranch. Number 27, Mason DeVal. Now Mason DeVal takes a strike. Well, North Manchester Hooks at Little League is making its first appearance in the New England Regional Tournament this week. They won the state tournament, which was only two games. Winning a best of three championship series by a combined 12 nothing score. And over the years, the New Hampshire state champion has made it to the New England Regional Final six times, but only won it the one time. That was in 2006 by Portsmouth Little League in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And the dream is certainly still alive for this current group in 2021 from North Manchester Hookset. Dom LeBranch at first after a leadoff single. Pike gets the breaking ball. And the swinging strike, and Deval is retired. Number four, Tristan Lucio. Tristan Lucier, who was last time up, hit a mammoth home run to right field. His 11th home run in 13 games this summer. There was another home run cut. Got a piece of it, but it's just a foul tip. Two balls, one strike. Oh, we've got lots of defensive changes this half inning for Vermont. Anthony Abrami's out and left. Landon Williams is in center field as that pitch gets away from Pike. LeBranch scampers to second. Sebby Smith is playing right field now. Luke Tomilowitz, who started the game at third base, is over at first. Maxwell Smith, who started at shortstop, is now at second. And Bryce Barber, who began in center field, is at shortstop. Oh, and about, oh, by the way, the left fielder, Kean Ekloff, is playing third. So, other than the catcher, Jacob LaRoche, I don't think anybody else is in their original position. My goodness. Here's Cal Lucier. And he rips it to right, and it'll go all the way to the wall after his twin brother was intentionally walked. That's an RBI double. Tristan scores. It turns into a two-run triple. 6-0 New Hampshire. Well, Cal says to his twin, Tristan, anything you can do, I can do well. Maybe not better, but certainly as well. Look at him run. Townsend's bunt. Gets another run to score, and he beats it out at first base. Yeah. 
seven nothing New Hampshire. Now Jacoby Acevedo shows bunt. Didn't look like he was serious about it though. And he takes a strike. Seven runs on nine hits, no errors for New Hampshire. No runs or hits, three errors committed so far by Vermont. Chopped the third, backhanded but foul by the third baseman Eckloff. Now the one, two, outside. The runner at first, Keith Townsend, reached on a bunt single to knock in a run. And that made the score seven, nothing. As New Hampshire has now scored in every inning. Single runs in the first and second, two in the third, and three so far in the bottom of the fourth. Grounded to third. And I think Eckloff thought there were runners at first and second and that he was going to be able to get the force at third. He went and stepped on the bag, but there was only one runner on base. And so Townsend now is at second, and Acevedo reaches with Tyler Chevette batting. Tyler drops it into center field. And the bases are loaded. Townsend had to hold up at second base in case that one was caught. With only one out in the inning. No chance out in center field for Williams to make a play on that ball. That is four consecutive hits now for New Hampshire. And the batter is Liam Carter Patton, who a week from tomorrow will turn 13 years old. He says his favorite actor is Keanu Reeves, and his favorite food is, you got it, right there on your screen, pizza. Good call. As long as it doesn't have too much stuff on it. Good job by the catcher, LaRoche, to keep the ball close. Three balls, no strikes. Liam Carter Patton is driven in a run with a bases loaded walk. To Milowitz's first pitch. Timmy Evans is the pinch hitter, the youngest of seven kids. Randy is a stay-at-home mom. His dad, Scott, is an orthopedic physician assistant. He went too far. It's strike two. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Evans gets a piece. Count holds nothing in two. Timmy Evans is going to be a seventh grader this year at Cauley Middle School. He's most looking forward to phys ed class. I get that. Favorite baseball player, Mookie Betts. Did he check his swing? It appears that he did. One ball, two strikes.
to Milowitz's 1-2 pitch. Slow roller, fielded by Tomilowitz. Out at home. Tomilowitz kept his cool, knew where he wanted to go with the ball, barehanded it, and that is close. Home plate umpire Thomas DeMuro called him out, but that is going to get a video challenge to see if the call will stand or not. That little second effort to pick the ball up cleanly might wind up costing Vermont. Again, he played off the mound exactly how you'd want to. That was his ball to play. He knew right where he was going with it. Credit the catcher, Jacob LaRoche, for turning himself into in effect, a first baseman, understanding that with the force play at the plate, he stretches to try and get the call, and now we will see from the home plate umpire what the verdict is, if the call will stand out or if it's reversed to safe. So, Ace Vito scores the ninth run. And that gets New Hampshire within one of reaching the run rule. Dom LeBranch. He bunts it foul. Well, LeBranch started this rally earlier in the inning, and he tries to finish it here. The play to the plate again, and it is over. Dom LeBranch began the fourth inning with a single and came around to score, and then he ends it with a...